Oh, I like the interactive thing. Raise your hand if you care about the air that you breathe. Well, thank you. Hopefully, um, that means I'm gonna stay in this job. So, what I do day in and day out is essentially debunk the tools that I was trained on as a graduate student. So, <laughs> um, let me go ahead and just bring up these bullets. I only have one slide, so I'll walk you guys through um, this diagram, my expertise, and some of the ways that my interests have evolved over the years. So, I spent three years at UC Riverside, um, a part of the country that has the worst air quality in the United States, ozone and particulate matter. And the problem is only getting worse and it's largely due to the expansion of e-commerce via Amazon, Target and other big box companies. So I run the air quality modeling and exposure lab. I am not a trained exposure scientist, so I'm looking to collaborate with someone with those interests, but essentially, I am a chemical transport modeler, so I use high performance computing to run a Linux model to get predictions of the spatial and temporal distribution of pollutants across the United States. And so I do things like source apportionment, which tells us, okay, for any parcel of air in the atmosphere, we can back calculate where it comes from and the strength of that source. We've recently gotten into exposure monitoring in my lab, where we use wearable sensors to track people's exposure through space and time, because unfortunately, traditional tools, ambient monitors, will not tell you what you're breathing right now. I can sense in this room that air quality is pretty clean. <laughs> and so I'm very interested in environmental policy and environmental advocacy because that is pretty much the driver for why my work is important. My work is regulated by the National Ambient Air Quality Standards and I sit on the advocacy side because as we've seen in 2020 and even before then, there's quite a justice issue when it comes to um, environmental exposures. So some of the work that we're doing in my lab uh, flows across four thrusts and in thrust one, we're largely looking at how do traditional methods break down when it comes to telling everybody and warning people about how to improve um, or reduce their exposure to air pollution. And thrust two is really the more technically aligned work that I do, where I'm looking at how do changes in meteorology, both present and in the future, how is that going to worsen uh, air quality as climate change accelerates and ecological breakdown also gets worse. We also have a focus on the air quality during the winter in Western United, in the Western United States because unfortunately the topography of the US proliferates the issue of inversions and the building up of pollutants in the atmosphere which causes adverse health effects. I would love to know if you all have biomarkers for different air pollution exposures. Um, right now, we know that, oh my gosh, okay, that's it. Um, I'm looking at <laughs> issues at the intersection of justice, uh, land use, urban planning um, to solve air pollution justice issues. Thank you.